Okay, Alexander, let's uh, talk about gas transit via Ukraine. And uh, the uh, talk is that uh, Ukraine is going to need to siphon off gas because, well, they're in trouble. They're in trouble as winter is, uh, we're, we're in it. <laughs> we're in winter. It's not fast approaching. We're dead in winter right now. And it's just going to get colder and colder. But also, uh, you know, the countries in Europe, well, they're going to need the gas as well. So it looks like we're going to have uh, some problems uh, coming coming about if Ukraine starts siphoning off the gas that is meant for uh, European countries. What's going on here? Yeah, well, you see, if you've lived in Northern Europe, which I suppose Britain just about counts as Northern Europe, we've had over the holiday, uh, the, the Christmas New Year holiday, rather warm weather. It was widely expected that we would. And that has led to, you know, the situation, the, the gas situation, the energy situation, even off, easing off slightly, though I gather the British energy industries are are, re- are in real financial trouble at the moment because prices are rising, and um, this has put everything like all, all this whole topic into remission. But the meteorologists, the people who tell us about these things about climate, they tell us that very very cold weather is coming, and energy reserves. Uh, uh, the natural gas in the underground storage reserves across Europe is at historically extremely low levels. And the weakest link in the chain is Ukraine, where they are in a very, very bad situation indeed. And the situation is so bad that we've now had the former head of NAFTA gas, which is Ukraine's former, uh, Ukraine's energy company, It's, it's gas company. Uh, he's come out, he's written a statement. He says that if the weather turns cold, Ukraine's going to run out of gas. And its only option at that point, if it's going to remain warm, or at least, you know, heat, provide heating gas to Ukrainian consumers, is to siphon gas, in other words, steel gas, passing through the Ukrainian pipeline network to Europe. So they're going to take gas out of the pipelines use it themselves, that will leave Europe short. And he said that if that happens, that the political consequences for Ukraine will be dire. At that point, we will see the Rus- uh, uh, the Russians once and for all say they're no longer prepared to keep Ukraine as a transit state. The Europeans will not object. And probably Nord Stream 2 will quickly come into operation. So we've had that warning from the head of NAFTA gas. Now, I'm going to say something. I think the Ukrainians are going to do everything they possibly can to avoid being put into that situation. And you remember when we did that last program about the fact that um, Russian gas wasn't flowing to Germany through the Yamal pipeline. I understand what's actually been happening is that the Europeans have been taking less gas, through, in fact, stop taking gas, through that pipeline because they're trying to divert some of that gas to you to Poland and specifically Ukraine to prevent the kind of scenario that this head of NAFTA gas, this ex head of NAFTA gas has been talking about, which would be a political disaster for Ukraine and for Europe. But of course, all that has done is that it's reminded some people in Europe, the more rational amongst them, about how important it is for Europe to continue gas supply from Russia. And we've now had a statement from Germany, from the German government, which clearly has overridden the Greens, because the Greens are opposed to gas. And the German government is now saying that Europe has to have long-term gas. Gas is an essential part of the energy transition. So that's arisen. And at the same time, we're hearing reports, more reports. We discussed those in the previous video that the Chancellor, the German Chancellor, Olaf Scholz, is heading to Moscow to meet with Putin soon. Is this, uh, is Ukraine siphoning off gas? Is that how they explain reverse gas flow? Yeah, well, reverse gas flow is a legal, legalized form of theft. What happens is this. The Russians contract to sell gas to, let's just say, Germany. They, uh, they contract to sell a certain amount of gas to Germany. The, the gas pipe passes through the pipelines 
much of the much of its for the moment through the Ukrainian pipelines. The Ukrainians take the gas, they pay the Europeans for the gas. The Germans pretend that the gas is actually heading in the other direction, which is absolute nonsense. Everybody knows that that isn't happening. And in practice, the Germans, because Ukraine can't afford to pay for the gas it's taking, the Germans, through all kinds of complicated routes, pay the Ukrainians the money, which the Ukrainians then pay them back for this gas. That's reverse flow. It's a ludicrous mechanism that has been set up to help Ukraine through its gas problems. The trouble is, things are now so bad in Ukraine that even that apparently is not enough. And because of the general shortage of gas in Europe, which, by the way, despite the warm weather, overall continues to get worse, just because of all of that, Ukrainian gas reserves are now at critical levels. And very soon, they might be they might be forced to extreme action, to extreme steps, and that's what this article by the ex-head of NAFTA Gas is talking about. My own personal view is that this he's been put up to do it by the Ukrainian oligarchs in order to get the Germans to provide them with even more reverse flow than they have been getting up to now. So I think this is what this is really all about. That's, that's right. But 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 as I said, it, what it has done is it's acted as a very useful reminder to the German government that all these fantasies that the Greens are coming up, people like Annalena Baerbock and all the rest, about, you know, doing away with gas, you know, not having Nord Stream 2, um, all of that is, sim is simply fantasy policies. They need that gas from Russia. And um, as I said, we've now had this statement from the German government and we'll, we'll, I suspect that over the next few weeks and months, we're going to see the Germans trying to sort of mend their fences with Russia in some way. At least the Social Democrats and the Free Democrats and the German government will try to mend their fences with Russia. And it's partly because, to say it straightforwardly, they need the gas. This is, by the way, the fact that Scholz apparently wants to meet with Putin and the fact that all these discussions between the Germans and the Russians on gas issues are underway uh, has annoyed some people in Europe. And I've been reading some extremely uh, uh, um, disappointed and angry articles in parts of the British media about this. They thought that, you know, with Baerbock and people like that in the new government, this period of better relations between Germany and Russia, as they'd imagined them, uh, is coming to an end. I'm not sure how good relations between Germany and Russia actually were under Merkel, but that's another, another story. They were expecting that relations were going to get worse, and they're now seeing to their alarm that there are forces in Germany which, on the contrary, want to make them better. And I've been seeing some really rather harsh articles in the British media, especially about this. Yeah. Well, what, one thing's for sure. Uh, you know, the you, transit gas through Ukraine just doesn't, it doesn't work. At, in in ah. the current state of things, Ukraine being antagonistic towards Russia and yet still um, being a transit point of gas, it just doesn't work. The model just ah. doesn't work. So they, they need to get Nord Stream up and running. Well, absolutely. I mean, if you can't I, have if, your cake and eat it too. Is my point? You can't have your cake and eat it too. Yeah, absolutely. If our if our analysis is is, is right, and I'm absolutely sure it is. By the way, that this article by this ex head of NAFTA Gas about Ukraine helping itself to gas, uh, siphoning gas, stealing gas destined for European cup, cu customers, and doing it openly. If it if it's really been he's really been put up to do it by the oligarchs and Ukrainian government, as I am absolutely sure is the case. Just think about it. It's Ukraine blackmailing Europe. <laughs> They're saying, you know, if you don't give us gas, we're going to steal your gas. And that will be massively embarrassing politically for you. So therefore give us more gas. What kind of partner energy partner is that if that isn't a reason 
for ending this relationship with Ukraine as a gas as a as a gas transit state. I can't re- I can't imagine what is. I mean, for so long as this situation persists, the Europeans expose themselves constantly to Ukrainian energy blackmail. And that's why the Ukrainians are so opposed to Nord Stream 2. It's not because it's going to increase Europe's dependence on Russia, economic dependence on Russia. It is because it deprives Ukraine of this tool it has to blackmail Europe. <laughs> and that's, that's the whole underlying narrative of Nord Stream 2. It's incredible that some European politicians are so blinded by their visceral antagonism to Russia that they actually collude in a policy, want to see a policy, they want to stop Nord Stream 2 so that, Europe, so that Ukraine can continue to blackmail them. I mean, it's, it shows how warped understanding of things in Europe has become. Merkel, at least to her credit, did see past that. Yeah, you can't be, you know, Ukraine says they're at war with Russia. Okay, so you can't be at war with Russia while at the same time being a gas transit point with Russia doesn't make any sense it at all. Make any kind. But it um, doesn't, doesn't yeah. make any kind of sense. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't. It just doesn't compute. And, and another point to to make is that we all know that uh, a lot of prominent uh, political figures were, were making a lot of money, and probably still are making a lot of money in and around Ukraine. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's European politicians that uh, that are getting paid on the back end of of the NAFTA gas transit well, deal. You know, of course they are. Absolutely, yeah. exactly. That is precisely right. Yeah, so they've got a a little bit of a financial stake in it as well. God, you know, what can you say? The, the whole thing is just corrupt from top to bottom. It just doesn't totally. work. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Right. We will Yeah, we will uh leave it there, everybody. The Duran.locals.com, Odyssey Bitch Rumble, and Super You look for all our videos there. And Duran Shop, use the code good day. You have a mug. Yes, you do. The good day mug. Use that code and get 10% off all merchandise from the Duran shop. Take care.